Okay, everybody. Um, oh, welcome back to our um, Revit videos. Uh, sorry for the delays. Um, been a bit sick again. So, um, and in all honesty, just started a new job. So, um, yeah, it's taken my um, attention for a couple of days. Um, anyway, I had a, um, a question posted to me on via YouTube um, about arcs and chords in Revit. So this is with regards to property lines. Okay, so um, I'll go through the basic process. I'm sorry for the person that asked me. I'm not going to be able to give you a definitive answer with regards to the chords, but I'll just give you what I've done in the past to basically get myself across the line with regards to um, getting the information correct. Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do is go to the Massing Insight tab. Okay, in this model site thing, there's a little arrow here, so I'm going to left click on that. Okay, and this punches up a few additional settings um, for our um, for our site data. Okay, not going to worry about the contours and all this sort of stuff just yet. But down here, property data, really important stuff here. Okay, so there's two ways to display the angles here. So we've got here by default degrees from north south. Okay, uh, north and south things. I'll be perfectly honest. I was never taught this at school. I, my understanding is that certainly in Australasia or Australia, it's a very old way of measuring um, degrees, etc. And um, I haven't seen a recent uh, survey, um, and I mean by the last 20 odd years, anybody use north ends and south ends. I have seen them in very old surveys, um, but you know, we're talking 40, 50 years old, some of these surveys. So, but to get away from this default, if I click on the down arrow, we just have plain old degrees. Okay, so I'm going to use that, it's just a little bit easier. Okay, um, we've got some units there, so we've got degrees, minutes, seconds, or decimal degrees. Um, surveyors like their degrees, minutes, seconds, so we'll maintain that. So just apply and OK. So it's just a little extra thing that we need to be aware of. Okay, next thing to do is to go into and try and create um, a property line. Okay. So I'm going to click on my property line here. So left click. Okay, two options. We can create by sketching, or we can create by entering distances and bearings. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick look at this one here. Okay, now I'm not going to draw anything in particular, but we're just going to take you through what information we have here. Okay, so one day I'll probably will do a proper little video on this. Okay, so at the moment we've just got one in here and we can add as many elements to a boundary as we like. Okay, so that's the first thing. So we can juggle these up and down, do what we like with them. Okay, so here we have a distance. This is in millimeters. Okay, so you've got to watch out for that thing as well. Look at your um, plan of subdivision. Okay, is it in feet and inches? Is it in meters? Make sure whatever it is make sure that you convert that to millimeters and rev it. Okay. Next we have a bearing and it's nice and simple. 90, 0, 0. Okay. Um, and we have a line here. Now if I click on line I get a little drop down arrow. Okay. And I can either have a line or and these are greyed out. Radius and left and right they are greyed out at the moment. Okay, and if I but if I this little drop down menu, if I click on the arc line or the arc button, these are become active. Okay, so what I can now do is that we can apply a radius to that particular arc. Okay, and the survey should tell us the distance of the arc. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. Um, You've got to be a bit of a guru at mathematics and um, algebra and all that sort of wonderful triangulation stuff, I think, to really be able to hack your way through curves and arcs and Revit. That is the stark reality. 
okay because in this information we don't they don't give us as the same information as what a survey would give us okay they tell us the distance of the arc the bearing of the arc and the radius of the arc but generally that should be able to give us the right sort of information and there's also a left and right which way is the arc bending okay so that's basically one way to um, get through you know or to create a um, a set of bearer or a set of property lines using numerical data from a survey okay if you've got no other information so I'm just going to cancel that out okay now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly Q2 I'm just going to draw one two three four okay Q da, da, and I'm going to put a little arc in here as well just like that okay let's imagine this is a property okay this is the answer hopefully that my you know, the person who's asked the question hopefully this helps you a bit okay so and the, the reality is that for me within my office okay um, as a general rule 90% uh, of my projects require a survey okay so I'll have an electronic CAD file from a surveyor and they will have supply all of this information typically in an AutoCAD file okay so now I can go to my property lines say this was an imported CAD file I can now go create by sketching and I can use my wonderful little thing here called pick lines and I can just go pick 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 and any arcs curves all this is wonderful stuff they can be picked as well. Yeah, watch out for splines, not so friendly, but that is how I would do it. Okay, and then I can go click the tick. I've got some I've still got my detail lines in there, so if I highlight, tab, delete, no, hold on, highlight, tab, select, delete uh, I don't know what went wrong there. Let's go with our site plan. There we go. There's our site plan. Okay, right. Annotate. Tag by category. There we go. So we can actually tag these property lines and they will tell us what the bearings are. Okay, 2 degrees, 261, 163, 90. And this one's 323. So it's going. This is an interesting one. So if I go Q1, which is for me is my distance measure, if I go from there to there. 4.55 meters so that's my distance okay 323 degrees will be again Q2 which is my line tool if I draw a couple of lines like this okay and then if I go angular dimension what are we picking out there? 126.4. That means absolutely nothing to me at the moment. However, if I go, oh, here we go. Forgive me while we do this, guys, because this is it's good to answer some of these questions. Right, another line on the vertical. Angular dimension, all the way around to there. Oh, it doesn't want to pick it up. It keeps picking up other things. MV, move. Let's get this bad boy up. Oh, what happened there? MV, move. Oh, I wanted to disconnect. There we go. Right. Annotate. Radial. No, it's not a radial, it's an angle. Picking up a whole bunch of little things in there. 36.4. 360 minus 36.4, just for argument's sake. 323.6. 
degrees. Okay, so we've got some rounding happening there. Okay, so when we punch in the angle in our in our boxes, we basically tell that's the distance for the radius or for the arc from there to there. That'll be the angle that it goes on. The rest of it should follow. Okay, so I'm hoping it's not the world's clearest answer. Um, and I've had to do a bit of work um, in the back in the foreground to sort of show you what my thinking is on this. Okay, one little trick as well with regards to surveys and property lines is that when you draw and rev it, is that it will go clockwise. Okay, so this one starts, so that's 90 degrees, so that's going in that direction. 163 is down there, 261 is there, 2 degrees up, and that's 323. So this is my start and finish point. Okay. Watch out for surveyors where you get really lazy surveys where they have 90 degrees of the top line, you might have a parallel down here or something like that, and they still have 90 degrees. Okay. Or this one might be read, you know, 81 degrees or something like that. Just watch out for that sort of stuff, okay? Revit wants you to work in a clockwise fashion, so you might have to do a little bit of thinking down the track. Anyway, I am hoping that um, helped answer one or two questions. Um, it probably created more questions than answers, but feel free to um, yeah ask more questions. I'll see what I can do. See you guys later.